There are many places in the world where you can get this close to waters, hornbills in our balconies, and it's just unbelievable how Singapore looks so green from the sky. I think the most beautiful thing I realized as a wildlife photographer is that no matter where you are in Singapore, you don't have to go far. There are spaces and incredible biodiversity everywhere around us. Personally, I think I underestimated what we have here in Singapore. So I hadn't really given enough time to explore Singapore. Before COVID-19 hit our shores, I was mostly working overseas, almost two weeks a month, across Africa, capturing cheetahs, stellar eagles in Japan. And uh, especially the last two years has been around Borneo, working with orangutans and some conservation NGOs over there. However, when the pandemic happened, uh, it was almost like I was rediscovering Singapore for myself. We may not have a lot of big charismatic animals like tigers or you know, leopards, but I think we still have incredible native biodiversity here in Singapore. You don't have to travel far to a jungle or a forest. Most of our wildlife is right there in our backyard. For example, the elusive raffles banded langurs, the long-tailed macaques, the lesser mouse deer, especially at Thompson Nature Park. In Sungyabullo, you'll be able to see uh, saltwater crocodiles, buffy fish owls, and a lot of painted stocks. Bishan Park is another place where you can see spotted wood owls and also the resident Bishan Otter family. I think the Singapore landscape is quite unique. I think most of our local wildlife have adapted well to the urban landscape. That's also the reason why you still see a good amount of biodiversity irrespective of where you go across our parks and reserves. The park is a treasure trove for wildlife. The reason why you see a reasonably good amount of biodiversity is because of the mangroves. So it's a nice blend of you know, patches of forest, a little bit of mangroves, and also the design of the park. This landscape is a lot more interesting because of the boardwalks around and the roads cutting into the, into the forest. So it's a lot easier to see uh, and film and photograph wildlife around the park. Initially when I started even thinking of a project like this, I remember chatting with some of my friends overseas and most of them were skeptical. You know, the, the standard answer was, oh, you have a few otters in the country, man. What else do you have there? But I think a lot of them were very sweetly surprised when they saw the final product. Almost 85% of the videos that I filmed is just around this park and just around the place where we're sitting right now. I think my most memorable moment was to be able to capture a eagle hunt a heron. And this is a fully grown heron. Usually something like this in the wild will probably take months just to be able to track, understand the location, the behavior, and to be able to even capture something like that because some of these are not in your control. But just to be able to get that right in my backyard, just five minutes away from my house, was just an incredible experience. Right now I'm working on Residence of the Park Part 2. The first one was basically a showcase of the wildlife we have over here. But Part 2 is a little more interesting because we wanted to uh, take it to the next level and show some uh, behavioral kind of footage, including interspecies behavior, which is quite unique. You can't do wildlife photography or videography in a rush. So a lot of it comes from keen observation. So I spend a lot of time just observing the behavior of these species. So I think when you have a better understanding of when they come, where they come, when they go, where they come, you know, a favorite perch of a bird, how certain species behave in the presence of other species. And then once I think you have that ability to anticipate, it becomes a lot easier to capture those split second moments. So I think that's the key. I grew up in India and I only moved to Singapore in late 2016. I remember before I moved here, I think I only had one condition. I said, I want to stay as far as away possible from the city and somewhere really close to nature. Uh, that's how we ended up living in Passos. Passos Park has been a very special place for me, especially in the last two years. I know I'm a little biased, but I think the community here is a, a little different. I think it's not just about the wildlife. I think over the last year or so, the human relationships, friendships that I've fostered in the park, uh, is just amazing. And these are strangers, you know, these are people I didn't know like a year or two years ago. 
I have people bringing us coffee, we have people bringing us breakfast here. They even celebrated my birthday here in the park. I want to do more stories about the people in the park, not just about nature, but also stories around people and nature and the coexistence in the park. For most part of my photography journey, my goal has been a very uncomplicated goal. Simply put, I wanted to help people fall in love with nature and wildlife. Because the way I look at it, if I can help you fall in love with nature and wildlife, I think that's a big win-win because, you know, we talk about global warming, we talk about sea level rises, there are so many environmental issues around us. So my idea was if I could help you fall in love with nature and wildlife, then it's a permanent solution. It's as simple as that. That's my only agenda.